The Texas Tech Red Raiders come into Pullman, Washington on the weekend that Mike Leach is being inducted into the Washington State University Hall of Fame and get dominated after the first quarter, especially on their ground attack, as John Mateer ends up setting a school record for rushing yards in a game by a quarterback with 197 rushing yards. The record he broke was 171 yards by Bob Kennedy back in 1942. If it wasn't for a sack late in the game, then he would have been over 200 yards and he would have been the Cougars' first 200-yard rusher since Dwight Hardy back in 2007. The Cougs beat the Red Raiders 37-16 and will now prep for the early season Apple Cup next week in Seattle. Before we get into it, if you're a Washington State University Coug fan, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. I'll be covering all things Washington State University football this season with pregame previews, postgame recaps, and much more. I'm a Cougar as of 2016, and when I'm not working my full-time job as a mortgage broker, I'm on here making sports content about the teams that I care about and try to help inform the fans on who they should be paying attention to and why. If you are thinking of making a move or refinancing in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to reach out to myself. I'll have my contact information in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the video. Before the game started, it was announced that Texas Tech's starting running back Taj Brooks would be out for the game with an arm injury. In week one for the Red Raiders, he rushed for 153 yards and a touchdown. The Cougs were fortunate that Brooks was not starting in this game. If you think back to week one against the Portland State Vikings in Pullman, they allowed 215 rushing yards against the Vikings. The game had a wild start as Jake Dickert decided to pooch kick on the opening kickoff, after which both teams had a bit of a shaky start. John Mateer threw an interception on the second play of the game, his second pass attempt of the game. Texas Tech had to punt the ball back to the Cougs. It seemed that there were some more nerves with John Mateer when he was throwing the ball to start the game. However, when he tucked the ball and ran, no nerves whatsoever. This guy is a running back one. Here's John Mateer's first big run of the day. He saw the hole open up there. He tucked the ball and broke away. Breaks off to the right side and gets around the edge. This would be a gain of 23 yards on this play. He's got the lateral moves, the acceleration, and the top end speed that you just do not see in quarterbacks. He would then finish off this drive with a design quarterback draw up the middle for a touchdown. And it wasn't just Mateer that excelled in the rushing game on the day. On this play, true freshman running back Wayshon Parker takes the handoff up the middle, breaks it out to the left side, gets around the edge, is able to beat the defenders for a 43-yard touchdown run. Wayshon would finish with 11 carries for 69 yards, which is an average of 6.3 yards per carry. On the next play for the Red Raiders, former WSU wide receiver Josh Kelly would fumble the ball, Wazoo would recover, after which Javinsky Schlenbaker would run it in for a two-yard rushing touchdown. Javinsky would finish with 11 rushes for 27 yards, averaging 2.5 per carry, and finish with two touchdowns. The WCU defense would come up clutch again in the first half, coming up with this interception here with just a minute left in the first half. A solid return gets out of bounds. There was also a couple injury scares. Kyle Williams would be hit. I count about four guys that are all putting pressure on that shoulder. He would have to go to the locker room. Eventually, he would come back out. But soon after he was back on the field, he was able to make this fantastic touchdown grab as the first half would come to a close. This is the exact reason why they have you do the tip drill in practice. The rest of the game was largely dominated by the Cougs with a few exceptions. But the Red Raiders were 1 of 5 on 4th down conversions. They threw 2 interceptions, lost 2 fumbles, were able to pass for 343 yards in the air, rush for 148. But the Washington State defense and the rushing game was really the difference on the day. The Cougs only passed for 115 yards, which will definitely need a change moving forward. But having a strong rushing game like this is a big key, and something that Washington State has lacked in prior years. And they've never had a guy that can do this. This was a 68 yard run, and he nearly was in the end zone. If his foot didn't go out of bounds, he hit that pylon and he's in. That's just absurd. And here's what John had to say about that run. No, I haven't seen it, right? But I like scoring, obviously, right? And I motioned him out and I saw a good box. I seen the hole and I was like, oh, I better get out of here. You know, I better start running. And then I start running for about 30 yards and then my legs get kind of heavy and I'm like, oh, they're going to catch me. And I'm going to get made fun of if they catch me. So I can't have them just hock me down, you know? The Cougs were far and away the better team in this game, and they absolutely deserve a spot in one of these power conferences, whether it's the Big 12, the Big 10. And here's what Dickert had to say about this game and where they're at compared to their peers. Feels great. 
Feels great for that locker room, for all the work that I've seen. These guys staying here, being committed to this program. But this is not a statement win. Washington State has played at the highest level forever. We beat another team that plays at the highest level. That's it. We've done that hundreds of times. Okay, That's the way we look at it. That's the, what we're excited about. When we came in to get 1-0. and We knew we had to play a certain way, and we went out there and did it. That's what I'm the most proud of. So, you know, I don't want to get into... You know, it was bigger than what it was. We took down a Power 5 team and we're a Power 5 team. Be on the lookout for our preview of the Apple Cup that likely will be available by Monday. But in the meantime, please comment your thoughts and opinions on this game. Make sure to like and subscribe. Go Cougs and we'll see you next time.